welcome to Choose Life. I am Pastor Gina Coleman. I'm excited that I get to come before you another day. We do have some um, guest speakers coming up, so hold on. You won't keep seeing my face every day. <laughs> I have some speakers planned for you. Today is a day that the Lord has blessed us to see, blessed us with goodness and mercy, following us all the days of our life. He is the good shepherd and he is going to lead us throughout the day. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get into prayer so we can get into the message. Um, all right. <laughs> I'm messing up already. Uh, Father, we thank you and love you. We praise your holy name this morning. Lord Jesus, we glorify you and honor you this morning. Holy Spirit, you're most welcome to be with us today. We need your leading and your guiding this morning. May we hear your still small voice more and more. May the, your voice increase in our hearing and that we will be obedient to what you're saying unto us in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, I thank you so much, Father, in the name of Jesus, for this privilege and this opportunity to bring your word forward to your people, Father. And I ask you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, let even viewers that uh, don't even know that they should come to this channel, find this channel, Lord God, for you will be sending them this way, Father, in the name of Jesus, to be fed, to be made whole, to be saved, set free and delivered, Lord God, to have a greater relationship with the Holy Spirit. So we ask you, Lord God, oh, I ask you, we ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to send some people to this channel, Lord God, that they will have a, a new life and they would choose life in you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, God. I ask that you would be with me as I bring forth your word this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Before I go on, y'all, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe and share, 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 share with people. All right. God bless you for doing that. Amen. So I decided to just go ahead and start with my glasses. I apologize for the glare from my ring light, but um, instead of keep taking them on and off, I still might do it, but for right now, I'm going to keep them on. All right, so I'm going to get into today's message. Today's title is Keep Your Eyes on Me. And I think this is funny because I just received a word um, this morning about receiving, about keeping my eyes on the Lord. In a nutshell, that's basically what the Lord was saying was for me to keep my eyes on him. So I'm just going to go ahead and read um, the message. It says, stop looking at your shortcomings and look at me. When you keep your eyes on me, you tap into my grace and power to overcome the ways of your flesh that leave you feeling guilty and condemned. Guilt and condemnation do not come from me. They come from the enemy. Arise, burn and shine. Don't let the enemy keep you down, cover you with his darkness or put you put your fire out. Father wants to use you in a new way. Repent, shake off the guilt, arise in the name of Jesus. My grace and strength are available to you. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> I have a cup of watermelon tea with, with me this morning. And it's funny, I chose this cup not really knowing what the message was going to be. But it's, um, I think you've seen it before, but it's the one that says, Be still and know that I'm God. This is Psalms 4610. So keeping our eyes on the Lord has to do with being still and not letting the enemy or ourselves or anything condemn us. But we need to be still and know that he's God and that he is in control. So I'm going to have a sip of tea. I love this tea. It's a nice watermelon tea. All right. So the Lord is saying unto us that we need to keep our eyes on him and that he does not condemn us. Um, it is the enemy. He said for us not to look at our shortcomings. And the thing is, that's what holds us a lot of us up is our shortcomings that we look at. Not the shortcomings within itself, but that we look at them and we use them as a measuring rod. We uh, look at, at, at what others are doing and, and it, it seems like what others are doing is always righteous, is always good. And it seems like what we're doing is always nothing and it's always unrighteous. And the Lord said he, didn't, he doesn't want us to do that. He said um, the condemnation and, and the guilt, it comes from the enemy. It doesn't come from him. And he wants us to take our eyes off of those shortcomings. Even, it, well, we all have them, right? Even though no matter how legit and how real they are, he doesn't want them to be the focal point in our lives. He wants them to 
he wants us to look at him and not be focused on shortcomings. Because if you remember in the word, um, I love King David. David had tons of shortcomings. He was a murderer. He was an adulterer. He didn't deal with his kids. Um, he kind of just <laughs> did some things that just wasn't right. But even before um, the Lord called him, he knew that. He knew that. And he said um, before um, when, when Samuel was, you know, sad in his heart because of what King Saul did, the Lord told him, like, you know, why do you cry? I have found a man after my own heart. Like, so, and he, he chose David, and but he saw all that bad stuff that David was going to do. He saw the stuff that Moses was going to do. He saw all the stuff that Solomon was going to do. And, and yet he called him anyway. So he said, don't for focus on your shortcomings and your guilt because one, Jesus has already covered our guilt. Um, Jesus has already covered our sins. So we don't have to worry about um, our sins in, in the in the in the aspect of having to, to pay the penalty of sin. When the Lord convicts you, it is not to convict you of the sin. It is to convict you to do what's right. It is not to convict you of the sin because the penalty for the sin was paid. It is to convict you to make a right choice. It is to convict you to turn and do the right thing. It is to convict you and I to repent and just change our minds and go the right way. The penalty for sin was already paid. So it's it's not it's like the Lord is saying to us when we do something wrong. I just want you to get up and turn and go to the right way. I'm not going to deal with the, with the penalty of sin. I I just want you to do the right thing. That's the bottom line of between uh, uh, conviction and condemnation. The enemy wants you to feel absolutely horrible about what you did and make. Um, he wants you to think that you cannot come back to God and you, you're not useful. That's what condemnation is from the enemy. He wants to make you think that you're not useful. You're not good. Um, God is through with you. You don't deserve a second chance or a 50th chance. Whereas the Holy Spirit convicts and he just wants us to, uh, to turn and make the right decision and to go the right way. Right. So the Lord is saying to us, keep our eyes on him, because when we take our eyes off of him, we begin to open ourselves up to the condemnation of the enemy. It's not it's not even always like great, massive sins. But uh, sometimes when the Lord says do this and we don't do it, we allow the enemy to tell us that God can't use us because we didn't get up and do what the Lord has said to do. But the Holy Spirit has said, don't put your eyes on an enemy, put your eyes on me. And I said, it was so funny because the Lord had given me a word actually yesterday about um, keeping my eyes on him in a nutshell, because he said that when I put my eyes on other things, it was causing me to not progress, causing me um, to be stagnant in places and, and stuck. Now that's what the Lord had said to me. When I've had said, that's what the Lord said to me. And I don't want to feel stagnant, stuck, or anything. I feel I don't want to be it. But because my focus was in another place, the enemy was allowed to, well, not allow. He kept me looking over there at that thing that's really not a real problem for me, but I kept looking at the thing. But as long as I look at the thing, I will be stuck because I can't hear, I can't see, I won't be able to do what the Lord wants me to do because my focus is over there. So I wanna share my word with you and encourage you to put your focus back on the Lord. It doesn't necessarily have to be a sin. It could be God just wants your attention for for a particular time in a particular season and yet we're looking um we're looking in another direction and like i'm looking in another direction now to turn my phone off well the lord wants me to be focused so he said keep your focus on me keep your eyes on me amen so um we don't want to uh, remain stagnant or stuck in a place because the Lord is saying, look at me, but yet we're still looking over there. We're looking at our shortcomings. We're looking at our faults. We're looking at other people's faults. We're looking at what they have and what we don't have. And the Lord said, no, just look at me. All those other things will not matter or they'll diminish or you'll know how I'll know how to conquer them. Holy Spirit, thank you. When we keep our eyes on the Lord, another 
great, great thing that I learned yesterday, like really, really got it. Um, it as far as uh, resisting the devil, the Bible says unto us that we are to draw near to God and then he'll draw near to us. And it says, resist the devil, resist the devil and he'll flee. And so resisting the devil has to do with ignoring some things sometimes. If you know a certain person um, is going to come around and they just going to like set you afire because of their behavior, because <laughs> of anything, that's a temptation from the devil for you to go off or for you to respond or for you to act in some way that's, that's not good. And so that's one way of resisting the devil by just ignoring um, what he is doing through that person. You know, sometimes people, um, there's certain personalities, they always got something smart to say. Always, always, always. Playing serious, always, whatever, right? And that gets kind of old to you sometimes, right? And so sometimes you just flare up and you say whatever you have to say or whatever, right? But that is the bait of Satan. He has baited you in to be offensive and me in to be offended rather. And um, now we're no longer focusing on God. Now we're no longer resisting him. And so now he has a foothold in our life. Help us, Holy Ghost. So that's what I learned. Like really learn what it means to resist the devil. Resist him. Just ignore him. Because at at one at um sooner or later he is going to stop bothering you in that area because he is not um he's not getting what he wants from you. He's not getting the reaction that he wants from you. So I pray for you and I that we would really resist the devil as we draw near to God, so that and he and God draws near to us, so that the enemy can flee. But as long as we give him um, a response as long as he give, we give him a response he's going to keep showing up in the same way and the lord says focus on me there are so many scriptures that the lord has in his word to help us to ignore satan um you know and he usually works through people right so that we have to learn those scriptures um uh, we have to learn those scriptures and put them in our uh, memory bank so the Holy Spirit can pull them up so that we can do them and say them when the enemy comes to us. And I'm looking forward to what God's going to do now that my focus has shifted back onto him. Now, I may have to shift a few times to, um, to keep uh, my eyes on him. And you may have to shift a few times from those things that the enemy is trying to use against you to get a rise from you may have to shift a few times until you and I, we get into the place where we can just resist him all together, all together. We could just resist him and not um, give him any room in our life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. So let's focus on the Lord. Let's keep our eyes on the Lord. And it says, arise and burn and shine. The Lord wants us to arise in those things that he's called us to do. He wants us to burn, like be a blaze, be on fire. And he wants us to shine, bringing him glory and honor. But we cannot do that if our attention is spread all across the board or not even on the Lord anymore, but on the devil and, and the things that he's doing. Glory to God. He said for us to repent, change our mind, shake off the guilt where the enemy has come in and condemned us and arise in the name of Jesus. He said, my grace and strength is available to you. My grace and strength is available to you. So the Lord said, he said, he just wants us to repent. Um, let me just go back over here. <laughs> shake off the guilt. Shake off the guilt. Don't allow the enemy to keep you in a place of guilt because God has pointed something out to you. Um, I surely didn't miss, um, yesterday. I just received the word that was coming unto me. I understood it clearer. I received it and said, okay, I get it. But also I had to be real with myself and say, I'm going to need help from God because I've been doing this thing for so long and now I need God to help me not to look at that thing over there or those things over there and help me to uh, focus on him. I want the other side of, of, of the victory. And I want to um, just encourage you with the word the Lord has given me. He said, I am stuck. He said, I'm stuck because I keep looking over there. And so I want to encourage you if you're not moving there's a possibility that you're stuck and your focus is on something that God doesn't want your focus on. Your focus is no longer on the Lord. Amen. So Selah. 
I'm going to go ahead and read the first scripture, which is John 16 and 8. So John 16 and um, 8 says, And when he comes, he will convict the world of his sin and of God's righteousness of the coming judgment. So this is the job of the Holy Spirit. So um, Satan tries to condemn tries to condemn and make us think that we're unworthy. God can't use us, but the Holy Spirit comes to convict us to turn towards. So if you're feeling any kind of condemnation, know that that is the devil and condemnation keeps us down where conviction raises us up. And I believe that I said that um, in a message one day this week. All right. So don't uh, allow the enemy to condemn you, but allow the Holy Spirit to convict, uh, convict you and rise so we can rise up and repent and go in the right direction and keep our eyes focused on the Lord. Amen. So the next scripture is Romans, Romans 7, 15, 19. It says, for I do not understand what I do for what I want to do. I do not do it. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. For it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that the good itself, I know that good itself do not dwell in me, that is in my sinful nature. For I have desired to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do for the do for I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. So the Holy Spirit knows that we're having this battle inside of between righteousness and unrighteousness. And he knows that the good that we want to do, we normally don't do. There's a war going on. So he knows the heart of man. He knows when we're intentionally doing something and he knows the difference between a struggle. So he doesn't want us to convict ourselves, to condemn ourselves because he knows the difference. Even reading that scripture <laughs> was a doozy because the do's and what I want to do, I don't do what I don't want to do, I do. It can be confusing even reading it. So even in inside, you know, I know that if we've been saved for a long time ago, we, a long time, we want to do what's right, but there's this, uh, sin nature that we still have that causes us to do wrong. So what the Lord wants us to do is to allow him to convict us unto righteousness, whereas the enemy condemns us unto unrighteousness. He wants us to feel guilty. Well, the Holy Spirit wants us to take the advantage of what Jesus did for us and turn from those things that we do and uh, live out and take advantage of the grace that he's given us to do right. Woo! <laughs> Amen. All right. And the last scripture is Micah 7, 19. Micah 7, 19 is really kind of special to me because a year, years ago, um, it was around 3 o'clock or 3.30 in the evening, or the afternoon rather, and my pastor um, sent me the scripture and she said, um, I'm going to preach at 7 and um, I want you to make up a song. I was like, what? She's like, yes, I need a song by 7. I'm like, okay, Jesus. <laughs> Here we go. So I had a song for her by, at, um, by seven. So it is Micah. I'm going to read the NLT version of Micah 719. It says, you again, you will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and you will hurl our iniquities in the depths of the sea. So when we mess up, the Lord has compassion on us. And not only does he have compassion on us, hallelujah, he throws our iniquities in the depths of the sea, in the deepest part of the sea. Because God, you know, we always say that the Lord um, throws our sins in the sea of forgetfulness which it's not biblical, but that is what it, it seems like, right? Or what, how it is. The Bible actually says he throws our sins in, in the sea as far as east is from west to be remembered no more, right? And so um, God 
doesn't, he doesn't forget and he can't forget. But what he does is he chooses not to remember. And so because the Lord chooses not to remember and he gives us compassion, he wants us to take advantage of the compassion that he has for us. He wants us to take advantage that he doesn't remember. He chooses not to remember the negative and the bad things that we do. He chooses to remember the, his gift of mercy, his gift of grace. He chooses to remember his kindness and his compassion. He chooses to remember that Jesus died on the cross for us and that, that uh, guilt that we were what, once under that weight that we were once under we're no longer under it and so he wants us to remember that and turn and come back unto him so that we can live the life that he wants us to live but the way that we're going to do that is we're going to have to keep our eyes focused on him meaning when we mess up go back to Jesus when we don't know what to do go to Jesus when we don't understand what's happening around us go to Jesus go to the father and keep our eyes on him him thank you father keep our eyes on him because he's compassionate and he throws our sins in the depths of the sea to remember to be remembered no more amen thank you father thank you jesus so you and i can focus that's what he wants us to do to focus on him so i'm going to go ahead and read the the prayer it says i will not heed the voice of the accuser you know satan is the accuser of the brethren he just sits and accuses us day and night amen it says help me not i will not folk i will not heed the voice i will not heed the voice of the accuser of the brethren Help me not to give in to the feelings of guilt and shame after I grieve you with my words and deeds. Thank you for casting my sin into the depths of the sea for the strengthening of my heart. Glory to God. Thank you, Father, for casting our sins in the sea, in the depths of the sea, the deepest part of the sea, into the abyss, the darkest place of the sea where no one can retrieve them, where it's nothing, no one can go down there to get them, Father, because it's so dark down there and it's so deep, Father God. So we thank you this morning, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you always, God, have something good for us. We give you praise for your compassion and your kindness. We give you praise, God, for your conviction. And Father, this morning, we pray that we will keep our eyes on you, God, that we will not be drawn away, Father, in the name of Jesus, by the words of the enemy, by the words of the enemy that come from people's mouths, Lord God, or the enemy speaking unto to us, uh, unto us, ours, unto us, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. So we just thank you this morning. And Father, we ask you to help us shift. If our eyes have been all over the place, help us to shift and put them back on you, Lord God, the God that's full of compassion, the Lord that's full of mercy and love and forgiveness, Lord God. Father, we ask that you would destroy the yokes, God, of people this morning in the name of Jesus that are weighed down by their guilt and shortcomings, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, rescue us, God, from the lies of the enemy. Rescue us, Father, from the tricks and the deception of the enemy, Lord God, that we would focus on you, God, that you would be the focal point and the center of our lives, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, and that we would rise, God, burn and shine and bring you glory, God, in the thing that you have called for us to do, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. So we bless you. And we thank you for the strengthening of our hearts. We thank you for the strengthening today, God, to rise up and to continue to go on, God. Forgive us, Lord God, for being all over the place looking at things that don't matter, God, and, and not keeping our focus on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you, God, that you are faithful, God, and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And God, we thank you because we repented, Lord God, because we confess that we're not, we haven't been looking at you, Lord God. The washing has begun, Lord God. So we thank you, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Focus. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Now, I shared y'all my stuff where God said that I was stuck. Don't be stuck. But well, that was yesterday. I'm not stuck today. 
because I changed my view. I changed my view to, to look at the Lord. Amen. So God bless you. Have a great day. I'll see you soon. And choose life.